Hi, I'm Hayley Victoria and welcome back to my Crime and Policing channel. Thank you for tuning in today. This is slightly off piece or going back to basics or back to how we started. We are looking at British crime and what better start than to look at crime right on my doorstep. So if you can see from the thumbnail, I didn't record part of this video from the comfort of my nice and warm house. It's only warm because I've got a blanket on by the way. It's proper freezing, isn't it? Because, you know, everyone's poor. Energy crisis. Anyway, so I went to the Peak District, which is right on my doorstep, and it is beautiful. Like, beautiful fields, gorgeous mountains, just beautiful, beautiful views. Almost mysterious, actually. And the place I was is shrouded in mystery. Not one, but multiple cases have been reported there with kind of similar um, stories and backgrounds. But the first one we're going to look at is so much of a piece of history that it's bore itself now into local legend. And I was right up there in Castleton and this case is of Alan and Clara. So Henry, brackets Alan, I think that's what they called him, might be the middle name, I don't know. And Clara were a very happy young couple, very, 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 very much in love. But the families didn't really approve of the union, at least not Clara's family. I think Alan was like from poorer stock and Clara was proper well off. Um, so they ran off. How romantic, right? They ran off to get married. And this is back in like 1758-ish times. So this is previous to any of the software we've got now for recording crimes. So some of the details are a little bit woolly, depending on the source of where they've come from. I've used a lot of different sources to try and gather this information. And I just find it fascinating that it's captivated people for that long. So if you, if you watch this channel, you know that I'm into history. And obviously I'm a massive um, criminologist and policing lecturer is what I do for a full time job. So this has really sparked an interest in me since I was very young, actually. And there are, well, there is still a massive piece of evidence left. But this is 1758. This is way, 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 way before any of the stuff we do now in terms of criminal investigations. So, as I mentioned, um, Alan and Clara, so it was known as Alan, but his real name was Henry Alan, or I don't know. But anyway, Alan and Clara were... Um, staying in an inn in Stony Middleton, which is this beautiful little village near to Castleton. And this is all in the Peak District, near Hope. And they've got beautiful names, these places. So, yeah, they were staying in an inn, having just eloped, ran off because, like I said, the family weren't keen on the union. And there was a chapel in the Peak District, kind of where, like, the whole Gretna Green thing now in the UK or Vegas in America, where you just run off to get married. You don't need to go for all the, you know, pomp and ceremony that you have to do for another um, marriage. I mean, I only ever got married in Vegas. I don't know what it's like for normal people who plan the weddings. Anyway, so if you ran off to get married thinking, you know what? It doesn't matter if they accept us or not. We are doing this. We love each other. Let's go. So they stayed at an inn in Stony Middleton. It's a beautiful little village. You can still visit there now. The inn, however, is since not there anymore. They've been turned into houses. Beautiful little houses. I wouldn't want to live there. You know, ghosts. And um, yeah, so they stayed at this inn, the Royal Oak in Stony Middleton. And it's while they were there. And I mean, she was really well to do. And he wasn't poor either. He just wasn't as rich as she was. And they got the finery on, you know, lovely clothes. And they were talking about the plans, what they were doing. And they were overheard by five miners about, you know, where they were going, what they were doing. And they thought, hey, some money there. Unfortunately for our couple, Clara and Alan, our star-crossed lovers here in this story, they never made it to that chapel because those five miners that had been listening in to their plans and their stories had other ideas. And those ideas was to take all that lovely money that they knew they had, all that finery, and take it for themselves regardless of the circumstances. It just so happens that while they were traveling through Winnet's Pass, which is where I was stood, they were um, hijacked by these, these miners and they were killed. So uh, apparently a pickaxe to Clara and um, Alan had his, his throat cut, which is obviously horrendous, horrendous. These poor, poor people. 
Um, and they had all their things taken off them. The horse was bolted and they were hidden within a cave. So it was in a cave like this. It might have actually been this cave where they found the bodies of Alan and Clara. And yeah, they didn't really know what to do with it at the time. However, there is a key piece of evidence that still remains, and that is the saddle. So the saddle remains at the, well, in one of the caves in Castleton Speedwell Cavern. And you can go and have a look at this. It's in the back of the shop. You've got to know where you're looking. <laughs> so you go into the, the, the Speedwell Cavern's like here. So this is Speedwell Cavern. And then there's a little shop here, which is bang next to where you go and buy the tickets. If you go right to the back of the shop, they've got some like cabinets with some things inside. One of those things is the saddle, so the very side saddle that Clara used. Now, they do say on the, on the tour and stuff that there are actually um, blood splatters on that seat. Now, that could provide key bits of information now if we were to have a look and trace back any lineage or see who exactly these, these people are. Um, but anyway, what happened then to these five miners? So we know, don't we, that our our stories, our heroes of these stories, Clara and Alan, have, have died. They've been horrifically murdered for their money. And all they want to do is get married. I mean, that sucks, doesn't it, right? Um, and they were brutally, their lives were just cut short way, way, way too soon. The five miners, however, didn't get away lightly. So they didn't get apprehended by the law. They didn't, um, you know, go to the gallows or anything for these crimes. They never were charged by human forces. However, Legend does say that divine intervention um, or karma was brought about for these people. The money that they'd taken from the couple was equivalent to about £35,000 now. So they really, really grabbed all this stuff and gone. This is, they, were, they were going for life. It wasn't just a, a, you know, a quick decision thing. They were off. So the, the five culprits, as it were, um, met quite a different end themselves. So one was said to have broken their neck on the very same stretch of land where they took the lives of Alan and Clara, they broke their neck. One of them was meant to have committed suicide, unable to shift the guilt that they felt. A third was crushed by a falling rock. So if you, if you ever go down when it's past, there are signs saying, you know, caution, falling rocks. Uh, one was crushed by that. A fourth died mad, whatever that means. And the fifth, however, the last one of the party to go, it, it died younger as well. And he made a deathbed confession, named all the other culprits. And finally, at peace with that, he passed away. So there you go. That is the story of Alan and Clara. There are other things that, you know, you if you read the internet, right, obviously the internet is full of stuff, right? There are so many other factors that, that kind of like bleed into this. So there are some accounts saying that the couples, um, their families had followed them for a certain amount of time, maybe that the, the miners had been paid off to kill them, lots of different things floating about. But as with time, things change. What we do know, however, is that two young people lost their lives. We do know there are five suspects. We do know there's apparently a saddle. Well, there is a saddle in this, this cavern. But whether or not it's all linked, who knows? I think it's a fascinating story. There will be more because there are other curiosities around the same place. In fact, where I was, the exact cave I was stood in um, when I went to the peaks was where another horrific crime took place. So that's what we're going to look at next. Thank you so much for tuning in. Um, I hope you enjoyed that little story. If you'd like to hear more about that or even have a look yourself, I do recommend visiting Castleton. It's beautiful. And the Speedwell Cavern, they'll tell you all about it. And they will show you the very saddle of which I mentioned. So thank you so much for watching. Please look after yourselves, look after each other, and please don't commit any crimes.